The Battle of Rivoli was a key victory in the French campaign in Italy against Austria. Napoleon Bonaparte's 23,000 Frenchmen defeated an attack of 28,000 Austrians under Feldzumeister Joseph Alvancy, ending Austria's fourth and final attempt to relieve the siege of Mantua. Rivoli further demonstrated Napoleon's brilliance as a military commander and led to French occupation of northern Italy. Forces See Rivoli 1797 Campaign Order of Battle Prelude Alvancy's plan was to rush and overwhelm Barthélemy Joubert in the mountains east of Lake Garda with the concentration 28,000 men in five separate columns, and thereby gain access to the open country north of Mantua where Austrian superior numbers would be able to defeat Bonaparte's smaller army of Italy. Alvancy attacked Jubit's 10,000 men on January 12. However, Joubert held him off and was subsequently joined by Louis Alexander Berthieren at 2 a.m. on January 14 by Bonaparte, who brought up elements of Andre Massena's division to support Jubit's efforts to form a defensive line on favorable ground just north of Rivoli on the Trambassor Heights. The battle would be a contest between Alvancy's efforts to concentrate his dispersed columns versus the arrival of French reinforcements. Battle The morning of Saturday, January 14, found Alvancy engaging the division of Joubert. He had united three Austrian columns between Caprino on the right and the chapel of San Marco on the left. The brigade of Franz Joseph de Lusignan was advancing to the north of Monte Balder, and the troops of Peter Vitus von Kuozdanovich and Joseph Philip Ukasevich were pouring down the roads on either side of the adage. Before daybreak the French were moving on the road from Rivoli to Incanal. Joubert attacked and drove the Austrians from the chapel of San Marco. At 9 a.m., the Austrian brigades of Samuel Koblos and Anton Lipthe counterattacked the French forces on the Trambassor Heights. Another column under Prince Heinrich of Rusplaren attempted to turn the French right via the Rivoli Gorge. Meanwhile, on the French right flank, Vukasevich had advanced down the east bank of the Adige and had established batteries opposite Osteria. The fire of his guns and the pressure from Kwozdanovich forced the French out of the village of Osteria and onto the Rivoli Plateau. By about 11 a.m., the position of Bonaparte becoming desperate, an Austrian column under Lusignan was cutting off his retreat south of Rivoli. To reopen his line of retreat Bonaparte entrusted this task to Massena's 18th Demi Brigade, newly arrived from Lake Garda. Meanwhile, Alvancy was on the Trambassor Heights urging his victorious battalions forward, though they were unformed by combat and rough terrain. With the 18th dispatch to check Lusignan, Bonaparte turned all his attention to Kwozdanovich. He understood the defeat of this column was the key to the battle. Unfortunately the French had very little reserves left and by at large had to accomplish this with troops already at hand, making the best of interior lines and his artillery advantage. Bonaparte thinned out Jubit's lines facing the Austrians frontally at the Trambass or Heights as much as possible and concentrated them before the gorge. A battery of 15 French guns were massed and poured canister shot at point-blank range into the advancing Austrian column that was emerging from the gorge. This devastating firepower struck first on the advancing Austrian dragoons who broke and stampeded through their own infantry causing mass chaos. At this juncture the brigade of Charles Leclerc assaulted the column frontally while Joubert laid down heavy flanking fire from San Marco. Here Antoine Charles de La Salle with just 26 horsemen of the 22nd horse chasseurs charged into the melee. Les Allais men captured a whole Austrian battalion and seized five enemy flags. In the center the battle was not yet won. Joseph Ox K renewed his attack from San Marco and drove back to Brigade of Honoré Ville. But at midday French cavalry under Joachim Murat from charged the flanks of Ox K's troops, which were driven back to the positions they occupied in the morning. 
Kwozdanovich realized he could not force the defile and ordered his troops to fall back out of artillery range. Meanwhile, while Lusignan was being engaged frontally by the brigade of Guillaume Brun, the division of Gabriel Ray, coming up from Castel Nuovo and the brigade of Claude Victor began to arrive. They crushed the Austrian column of Lusignan who fled west with less than 2,000 men remaining. The French lost 3,200 killed and wounded and 1,000 captured, while the Austrians suffered 4,000 killed and wounded, plus 8,000 men and 40 guns captured. One authority gives the French 5,000 and the Austrians 14,000 total losses. Aftermath The next day Joubert and Ray began a successful pursuit of Alvin C., all but destroying his columns the remnants of which fled north up into the Adige Valley in confusion. The Battle of Rivoli was Bonaparte's greatest victory at the time. After that he turned his attention to Giovanni di Provara. On January 13, his corps had crossed north of Legnano and driven straight for the relief of Mantua who was besieged by French forces under Jean Serrurier. At night on January 15, Provera sent a message to de Gobert Sigmund von Wormser to break out in a concerted attack. On January 16, when Wormser attacked he was driven back into Mantua by Serrurier. The Austrians attacked from the front by Massena and from the rear by the division of Pierre Augereau were forced to surrender with his entire force. The Austrian army in North Italy had ceased to exist. On February 2, Mantua surrendered with his garrison of 16,000 men, all that remained of an army of 30,000. The troops marched out with the honors of war and laid down their arms. Wormser, with his staff and an escort, were allowed to go free. The remainder were sent to Austria after undertaking not to serve against the French for a year. 1,500 guns were found in the fortress. On February 18, Bonaparte proceeded with 8,000 men to Rome, determined to come to a settlement with the Papal States which had shown covert hostility so long as the campaign had proceeded with uncertainty as to the fate of Italy. But with the fall of Mantua the Austrians were finally driven from Italian soil, and Pope Pius VI agreed to an armistice dictated by Bonaparte in Tolentino. Snow had closed the Alpine passes, but Austria still refused Bonaparte terms of a peace agreement. He prepared one last campaign to the east, into the heartland of Austria to the gates of Vienna itself. Legacy the Rue de Rivoli, a street in central Paris, is named after the battle.